Hey guys, this is Ed, Paul, and Anna of Current Brand Media, and we are here to tell you a little bit more about our sponsor. Sportsball is a great subscription service geared towards minor league baseball fans. Each box features a different minor league team. You get a box every three months with minor league baseball gear, including different styles of hats like Ed's favorite, the dad hat. The cost is less than $12 a month. Proceeds from each box goes to More Than Baseball, the only nonprofit dedicated to the well-being of minor league baseball players. We all know that Parents' Days are coming up this summer, so if you've got a mom or a dad or a grandma or a grandpa who are particularly difficult to buy for, but you know they're baseball fans, this is the answer, guys. Meet your new favorite team at sportsballbox.com. Is there anybody there? Oh, yeah. What if there was a show that was focused on the emotional connections and the community connections that baseball builds for everyone? What's up, Dad Ed crew? Ed here. And on this episode, I bring you guys Anna Di Tomasa of the Baseball Bucket This podcast. We talked about how she created the website, how it led her to create the podcast, and finding fans just like you. And really ask you that question what's left on your baseball bucket list? But, guys, without further ado, I'll give you the episode. All right. Well, I want to welcome you guys to yet another episode of the Data Chronicles. And with me today, I have one of my counterparts, guys, one of my Curve Brain Media members, Anna Di Tomasa of the Baseball Bucket List. How are you doing? I'm good, Ed. How's it going over there in Raleigh or near Raleigh? I guess you're you're just outside Raleigh now. I am outside of Raleigh, and it's amazing. It's beautiful. Uh, the weather is better than Cleveland. Um, so it's not that bad at all. I'm wearing a hoodie acting like it's cold, but it really isn't, you know, but it's okay. I like it. It's better than 20 degrees. I'll take that all day long. Yeah. A hundred percent. (laughs) Yeah. Well, it's good to be here with you. Thank you so much for having me. It's an absolute, it's, it's mind blowing that we've been doing this for a long. I was one of your, your, um, first ones, actually your, I was your second one on your podcast. Um, because your dad was number one, which was cool. We're going to touch up on that. We're going to talk about that, but that was pretty cool. I was like, yeah, I'll do it. Are you kidding me? Anybody wants to hey, listen, this is, I'll say it right now. If anybody wants me to be on their podcast, yes, I'll say, it. I'll say it right now. Nice. So, A blanket acceptance. I like absolutely. It. <laughs> yeah. Why not? I mean, what am I going to lose? Right. So, yeah. um, all right. So let's get started. Are you ready? Cause this is now is you. On the other side of the Zoom call, now you are the one taking the questions, and I just sit here while you give me a five-minute answer. Yeah, I'm. Uh, I'm a little nervous, but I'm. I'm happy it's it's with you. So uh, let's do this. Let's do this. All, All right. right. Okay, take me back. All right. When when did you know baseball was it for you? When did what was that moment? So it's kind of tough to say, like, there's not a defining moment for me, right? Like I just grew up as a kid who loved baseball. I played Mm T-ball, grew up, you know, my brother's two years older than me. So I would go to his coach pitch games and his little league games and just really enjoyed it. So played T-ball. When I was in elementary school, we lived kind of just outside of the Dallas area. And so I was like pretty much a rabid Texas Rangers fan. Yeah. And yeah, uh, grew up, you know, this is think, think back to, you know, early nineties, mid nineties, you've got Pudge, you've got Juan Gonzalez, you've got Rafael Palmero, Rusty oh. Greer, the dream team who did nothing, but, um, you know, welcome to Cleveland great, fandom, <laughs> right. <laughs> some great summers at the ballpark. Um, especially, you know, when the whole family would go just really, really good memories there. And then, you know, as often happens, like the older I got, the more I focused on the sport that I actually was halfway decent at, which was soccer. Nice. And yeah. I kind of, kind of fell out of following baseball. Baseball's a very time consuming mm-hmm. sport to follow, but then around, right. I guess right before I started high school, my dad took a job in the Sarasota, Florida area. And so we were in devil rays country and my dad got a season ticket plan in 2008 and you know that that entire summer we just 
I'll, I'll remember that summer just back and forth to the trough <sighs> over and over. And uh, it was just, that was it. Like from then on out, it's been Tampa Bay Rays and they're going to be my team until they or I no longer exist. You know, I was just wondering, right? You're Texas, you know, that's your team. You grew up with yep. that. And then all of a sudden you switch allegiances and yep. go with the Tampa Bay. I'll be honest. I mean, that's kind of rough, right? You know, you go from Texas mm -hmm. to now the race, although they lately they've been doing really good. So I think that you're, it, it paid off for you. Yeah, that was the thing is, so my dad got this season ticket package in 2008. You have to remember in 07, the Rays were literally in the basement of the AL East. So, mm -hmm. you know, there was nothing when he told me that I was like, well, that's interesting. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, we ended up going to the games and obviously that was like a magical year for the team, made it all the way to the World Series and everything like that. So from then, I mean, I guess, yeah, if they had been awful, I don't know, you know, because now I'm back in Texas, mm -hmm. but I'm still following the Rays. So it's, it's interesting. Now, do you still, do you also root for the Rangers? Now, you know, since you're back in Texas? Yeah, I go to like a handful of games. I don't know, maybe like 12 games a year for the mm -hmm. Rangers. Obviously, almost all of the Rays games whenever they're in town. But yeah, if they're not playing the Rays, I want them to do well. I, you know, I like the the team to do well for the city and a lot of my friends here are rangers fans gotcha I, you know it's 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 tough like now i'm in i'm in north carolina and yep. there's no team you know there's no major league baseball i mean there's a crap ton of minor league which i mean i love i mean that's you know based my podcast on and everything but this no you know i i had to purchase the mlb package in order for me to see the newly named guardians you know yeah so yep. it was, I, I get it. Yeah. That's interesting. Cause I, you know, I went to school in North Carolina, not far from where you are. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I remember that about, about that area is you, you seem to have a ton of Braves fans and yeah. some, yeah. Some people who, you know, maybe hate themselves, some Baltimore fans. And then, uh, in 08, <laughs> I guess there was the, the newly minted, uh, Montreal Expos, the, yeah. the new, DC team, the Nationals, and that's so. and that's that's just, that's the interesting one. Those are the, the the top two teams around this area, at least that I've seen. So besides uh, Braves fan, right now they they all seem to come out right. But is Baltimore, God bless you, uh, and then <laughs> Nationals. Those are the ones that I see a lot of, you know, in this area. So which is interesting, you know. I wonder if ever uh, North Carolina gets a major league team, if they're all sweet, you know, we'll switch allegiances and, you know, go to uh, and become a, whatever that North Carolina major league team is going to be. Yeah. I would I hope know. so. I mean, I, I would, I would hope so. I think, you know, the question is where do you put it? You know, is it, is it, is it a North Carolina team? Is it a, a Charlotte team? Is it a Raleigh team? Is it a mm -hmm. Durham team? You know, is it a, so, I, and I don't know if you've seen this, but there's a there's a a, a small movement here. It's called MLB Rally, um, and they they're they they're putting a very good case for why they, it should be Rally because they're doing the 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 triangle right. They're basing it mm -hmm. all on the triangle, on like Charlotte right where now they because Charlotte kind of took themselves out a little bit when they put a team right in the middle of downtown Charlotte. So I don't know. I, I it's it's very interesting, very intriguing. I'm very interested to see because now that Apple is moving here, right? They're they're having a headquarters here. So I, I, I oh, and all of a sudden Apple is going to be showing uh, some games. So I don't know. Yeah, yeah, it's going to be fun to watch. Kind of over the next couple of years, you know, there's definitely going to be an expansion team. You know, where's it going? I don't know. I think it's going to be. I have an inclination to think it's going to be Nashville. That's my my gut feeling. You think so? No, yeah, I think there, that'll be. You the think next there'll one. be two? What do you mean? You think the sounds will stay? Or no, you no. Mean? You think there'll be two expansion teams? Mm, it's interesting, right? Because like a couple of years ago, they reworked that schedule so that instead of interleague, mm -hmm. you, you now have it to where there's always one. So you could theoretically just add one team, but you would you would like to see them add two, right? Like keep it even. One, one yeah, league. one national, one American league. Yeah, I yeah. think they'll eventually have to redo the. Um, the, the divisions again, I think that's probably going to end up happening as well. 
My, yeah, that's, I think so too. Again, this is just me looking from the outside in, right? You know, we say some things and then all of a sudden Major League Baseball goes and does the total opposite that no one was thinking <laughs> about, like uh, making the bases bigger and things like that. So I don't know. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah uh, that, that was a surprise. Right? Yeah. I, I don't get it. Whatever. It, listen, they said it's safety. I say it's just they want to create more runs, you know, to make it more exciting. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah. Um, so so I, we talked about that. I was a, uh, a guest on your podcast. How how did you decide that you wanted to do the podcast? Now, was that something that grew out of the website that you created? You know, and it was the website created first. And then the podcast grew. How how all of that happened? Yeah. So in 2020, I went to game three of the World Series. And if you remember, that was the night before the Brett Phillips, you know, craziness with the airplane and and the the crazy walk-off win there. So uh picked wrong there, but I was there <laughs> with my dad and that kind of earned me a spot as a guest on the Locked On Rays podcast. And so yeah. I did an episode in November of 2020 with them and just had like an absolute blast talking baseball with them. And I mean, you know how it goes, right? Like yep. you're you're just like, hey, this is this is fun. Like this, this could be something. Right. So yeah, the website was up since August of 2020. It had been this half-baked idea in my brain since 2008 when my dad and I took a trip to a bunch of different ballparks and kind of decided that we were going to try to check off all the major league parks. And finally, when COVID happened, I had all this spare time on my hands like we all did. <laughs> and so built the website and was reading all of these bucket list items, all of these like baseball memories that people were writing about and just thinking like, this is incredible. Like what a treasure trove of all of these things that make baseball what it is, you know? Mm -hmm. And so I started talking to my dad about it and I was like, dad, I think I got this idea. Like, you know, we always talk about these defining moments where like we can both kind of just mark our lives by the time of baseball, right? Like you can, you think about the furniture you were putting together when the Rays get one game 162 or, you know, whatever it may be. Yeah. And so, um, yeah, I don't know. I just said, I said, I don't think there's a show from the perspective of like a fan, mm -hmm. you know, everybody's interested in hearing from these pundits, these like talking heads about who's going to get traded tomorrow or who did what last night. But what if there was a show that was focused on, the emotional connections and the community connections that baseball builds for everyone. And so that was just kind of how the show came to be. And my dad said, well, you know, if, uh, if you want to do a test run, you know, you could interview me and I'm, I'm pretty good at talking. So <laughs> that's, that's where the first episode came from. So he invited himself uh -huh. onto your podcast as the first uh -huh. guest. That's uh -huh. awesome. Love it. Yeah. And Kudos has, to your has dad on that. Tried to invite himself back like several times. So, uh, you know, like we're definitely going to do a, a recap, like a, a catch up episode with him because he's he's one of the fan favorites. It, it, listen, it was awesome. And I remember the day that I listened to your podcast, I, I, I distinctly remember this. OK, so I was driving to and this is when I was still in Cleveland. I was driving to uh, a game, the Lake Erie Crushers. Uh, to meet uh, my buddy Kelly and his wife Christina, right? And on the way there, I listened to your episode and it was hilarious. Your dad is so funny, you know? So I was like, this is something like, I'm like, I, you know, I was like, this is, this is great. I think this is going to be, this is going to be a great podcast, right? Because of like, you know, like you said, nobody has ever done something where it's like, you know, talking about the bucket list, you know, from a fan's perspective, you're right. There's too many talking heads out there. You know, sometimes they may say that about us, but, you know, we're <laughs> fans. You and me, we're fans. We talk about this on yeah. a daily basis, but I think that's great. I think, yeah, I, I'm a huge fan, you know, so that's an awesome story. And it, it started like you and me through the uh, yeah. uh, the magic of that happened uh, through the pandemic. We were bored and needed something to yeah. do. Something constructive, too. So, like, I'll take that any day, you know. I mean, they're, they're worse things to sink your time into. And um, 
at the end of the day, I think, and I know you'll probably say the same is true for you. Anytime somebody reaches out and says, you know, like, I, I love what you're doing. This is positive. It's, it's making me happy. Like it's giving me something to look forward to each week. Like what more could you possibly ask for? You know? Right. Even if, listen, at the, and I'm not kidding you. If two people listens to the, to this podcast, I'm happy because I know that I'm doing something that I love, no matter how many people listen to it. It's exactly. great. I love it. Exactly. Yep. Exactly. And of course my wife thinks I'm crazy. You know, I told her just like you, I told her that I was like, honey, I'm thinking about doing this. You know, uh, what do you think? She goes, well, you're not, it's the pandemic. You're working from home. So yeah, why not do it? You know, I was like, just so you know, it's going to cost some money. Uh, <laughs> many, many hats later and all this stuff. Here we are. Right. Yeah. But I think you were kind of like, that's kind of an evil genius plan, right? You're like, I like hats. Maybe I can convince my wife that I need these hats to create a show. Yeah. <laughs> it's true though. It is. And that's how it started. That's exactly how it started. And, yeah. you know, a lot of people don't know this, but I reached out to you first. You were the first one that I reached out to and said, hey, and you were what a couple of episodes in already. And it's like, so I'm thinking of doing this. Um, any pointers, <laughs> you know, and look at us now. And you directed me to to the to the site that we host our our um, our podcast, you know, what I should do, what I should get. So I, I got to say, I, you know what? Thank you, because you are the main person that helped me out through all of this. So thank you. Uh oh. That's very kind of you to say. I, I appreciate you for coming on my show and being such a, a great guest to start it off. You know, if I had if I had just fallen flat on my face with episode two, you know, oh, I don't know that I would have yeah, not been doing this. I no. kept going. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> exactly. So so this journey of uh, the the podcast uh, is taking you to meet so many awesome people. Um do you reach out to them? They reach out to you. How do you, how do you do all of that? Because I mean, you're, you got some crazy, awesome guests on. Yeah. Um, so it started, you know, it started with just finding a couple of people on baseball Twitter. I think I put out like a tweet that said, here's my idea for a podcast. What do we think? Is there anybody out there who is yep. interested in, in coming on? And obviously got a lot of, of interest that way, which was phenomenal because it gave me several episodes to kind of just get you know find my feet and, and get started yeah, get your feet wet and go from in there yeah yeah and now it's it's gotten to the point where luckily you know at the end of every show I say basically if this sounds like something you'd be interested in mm -hmm. send me a note and you know I get a couple of those every week and it's it's been really great to find people from just like all different walks of life, you know, they're mm -hmm. fans of different teams, baseball means different things to them. And, and then you have like kind of your big swings that I call them where I reach out to, you know, Rob Nelson, the guy who created big league chew, Randall Thompson, the dugout mugs guy, you know, Craig yeah. Capitera, who is, uh, he is a talking head, but he's, he's, he's got such a fresh perspective on kind of the inner workings of the game. So I, you know, I haven't really ever had a scenario where somebody turned me down, you know, it's usually, it's usually, I think that just speaks to the type of people who are baseball fans. It's usually, yeah, what can I do to help? Yeah, And it speaks to the community that we're all part of, right? Mm -hmm. That, you know, we're all, we are all so willing to help each other out that, you know, no one is going to say no. I'm like, are you kidding me? You know, if someone literally right now sends me a message and, um, do you got a couple of minutes to talk about, you know, I'm thinking of doing this. I'm like, absolutely. Here's my phone number. Let's talk. I'm more of a talker. Just so you know, guys know, I don't, I'm not really a text message kind of guy. Let's call each other and talk. <laughs> what a weird thing, right? A podcaster wanting to talk. <laughs> yeah. Strange. That's old school. That's what right? they call that. Yeah. I, I guess I am. I guess I am. Um, so the evolution of your website now, like, you know, um, that goes hand in hand because if people want to reach out to you, they, they want to be on the podcast, they have to go to the website, correct? Yeah, that's usually the way it works. Sometimes it's a Twitter message, you know, mm -hmm. whatever, whichever way. Gotcha. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, apologize. So you got, you, you got the podcast 
Uh, and then all of a sudden, these two crazy dudes decide that they wanted to invite you to be part of this crazy idea, um, you know, of corporate media. Uh, how, you know, when you heard about that, like, you know, what was your initial thought? You're like, uh, no, absolutely not. I don't want to do this. Yeah, but then, you know, I just, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> no, I was ecstatic. Are you kidding me? Like, come on. So, you know, a week or two before that, I had been, I guess it was around that time that you and Paul started doing the the Wednesday night dad hat by design. Yeah. So I was, you know, I was sitting in on a couple of those and I was just like, man, these guys, they're fun. Like, these are two <laughs> fun dudes that like, I just, I love talking baseball with them. You know, you've yeah. both been on the show, both have been very gracious anytime I had questions for either of you. And so when you reached out to me, I was like, this is it, let's go. Like, this is, this is how we help each other build something that matters. So yeah. I was, I was ecstatic. So pumped. Yeah. And it's, it, like you said, it's like, it's something that we, we, we felt that, you know, the baseball community, minor league community, right. Need a, a, a place where we can all just share ideas and share our our content that we all create because it's all we're all different you know like you are you have a one side of a perspective of a podcast you know i have one now you know we got you know baseball map guys jim patrick right who you know mlb his, had history which is hilarious right um kudos to your uh to your logo by the way uh patrick and you by the way all-star you are the creator of our website which is you know I've, I, I don't know how many times I've texted, you know, and said, I am such an idiot when it comes to things like this. How do you even do this? <laughs> so it's awesome. Oh, um, thanks. So let's go into some questions on that. Uh, I posted, you know, on Twitter. Uh, some people wanted to know uh, some things uh, about you. So let's take a look. You know, the first one is from, uh, of course, Patrick Larson. Um, and I'm going to read it uh, here. It says a question for the awesome Anna. What is her favorite Tampa Bay Rays affiliate and why? Yeah, this is tough because you have the Montgomery Biscuits who are quite possibly the best minor league <laughs> team name out there. But, you know, sad to say I have not been to a Montgomery game yet. So I've got to go with the iconic Durham Bulls. Oh. That was, uh, you know, like like I said, I went to school right around there. I was 45 minutes away from the, the DBAP, as they call it. And mm -hmm. that was the first baseball game I ever went to alone, you know, in college. And Just by yourself? Kind of, yeah, yeah. Like, usually I, I'm taking somebody along with me or whatever, but there was, there was one, like, fireworks Friday or something, and I was like, man, I want to go. I can't find anybody to go with me. I'm just going to go. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to go and I'm going to sit there alone and I'm going to watch baseball. And of course I end up talking to the person I'm sitting next to for like the entire <laughs> game, course. but you know, it, it was just kind of one of those pivotal moments where I was like, man, baseball people are just cool. Like they're, they're just my people. Yeah. And, and the beauty about baseball is not like football or basketball that you can actually have a conversation with someone and, not be able to not not having to miss any action of the game right because in football you got to pay attention the whole time and basketball is the same thing but in baseball is you can have a couple conversations pay attention and then go back because you still got the pitcher has to make you know his you know wind up and all that good stuff so uh, you're right and your choice for Durham balls is perfect it's a uh, I mean, that's the team I grew up, you know, when I was, you know, moved here to the U.S. and I saw Bull Durham and I just fell in love with the team. So I agree with you there. That's a great, great. OK, uh, here we go. Uh, this one is from Mike Sellers and Mike Sellers asked uh, for Anna, what's her three favorite features of Comerica Park? Hashtag motor on and go Tigers. <laughs> I yeah, think he's so a Tigers fan. He is, yeah. He's um Mike Sellers, he's a big Tigers fan. He's a big uh, Cabrera fan, if I yeah. recall. Like that's that's his guy. And so the last time I was in Detroit was 2017. And I gotta say it was like a perfect day, weather-wise. Mm -hmm. You know, it was it was June or July or something like that. And you know, 
June or July in Detroit's a lot different than June or July in Dallas. So yeah. <laughs> if I could say the weather was one feature, I would, but I love walking up to that ballpark. They have these huge concrete statues of tigers and they're like swatting at baseballs. I mean, they're, they're gigantic. They're like <laughs> four or five times like my size. <laughs> and uh, it's just a beautiful gate. Like the way that they've got that, it's just, it's beautiful. So that's one. I'd say number two is they have this really cool kids area where there's like actually a carousel inside of the ballpark. So I've know, never been there. So that's awesome. Yeah, it's really cool. Um, and it's kind of like, if I remember correctly, it's kind of like a carnival-esque little corner of the ballpark where you, you could take little kids if you had them. And um, I thought that was super cool. It's just something unique that I hadn't really seen anywhere else. Mm -hmm. So that's two. And then number three would be, you know, my dad grew up outside of Detroit. Most of my family has worked for Chrysler at some point in their life. So, you know, that's Motor City right there. And I think that they do a really good job of paying homage to that with the, the way the skyline of the city sits in center field. And they've got, you know, I think it's kind of shifted between Chevy and Ford, but there's yeah. always there's always that that little feature out there with one of the trucks that Detroit's You're known right. yeah. for. And yeah, I love that. I love that they just nod to the city like that. And that's... You know, that's something that was really big in minor league, right? The connection to uh, the town, the city. Um, and it's nice to see that Detroit is, you know, really holding on to its roots. And that's pretty cool. I like that. I got to make yeah, it eventually. Not a, yeah, not a lot of the of the major leagues, major league clubs do that. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Like, that's something that the minor league does really well is tapping into the the historical tendencies of a community but i feel like yeah. you know the the majors don't necessarily pay that much attention to that so it's cool to see let me ask you and obviously this is from a fan's perspective right uh, you you've attended plenty of major league and minor league games um do you think that major league teams rely mostly uh majority of their fandom on um their stars or players, right? Because they don't really do a lot of connecting with their fans while at the game, unlike minor league baseball. Um, and you know, do you think that's something that's that's missing in major league baseball now in 2022? Yeah, I do. I think that that's exactly what you said is true. I think you know, if you look at the big four sports, and maybe you take the NHL out of it because it's not necessarily like a widely viewed game but their mm -hmm. fans are rabid and they're they're very loyal you look at nfl mlb nba the mlb is the most in trouble out of all of those right it's the most disconnected from the youth it is mm -hmm. it really is uh I, and, and i i put it in i put it like this the nba will will not tell you not to share some video on social media in fact they actually allow you to do it and want you to do it because they want you to promote the game if mlb sees that you put a video of something that happened they will automatically tell you to take it down yeah or they'll report you to twitter and get you kicked off the platform so yeah 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 i mean mm. <laughs> and that's that's my issue with major league baseball right now that yeah. there is no connection to fandom. Listen, and I, I, you know, a lot of people are not going to agree with me this, but look at MLS. MLS, if you look at their fans, they're growing. They are rabid fans, right? Mm -hmm. If you see them on the stands, they are crazy. They are a lot of fun and it is fastly growing. Same thing with lacrosse. Baseball, you know, they need to, yeah, I, I get what they're trying to do. They're trying to make the fa the game faster. They're trying to, you know, create more runs, but they're missing that part of their fans. And I don't think they get it. They really don't. Yeah. It's uh, it's interesting. You say that, you know, because Dallas just got a rugby team. Yeah. And this is their, yeah, the, the Dallas Jackals, and this is their first season. And, you know, there is, 
already a fan club called the Jackal Den that's got like this section of the seating and they're there at every game. And it's just, you know, my my sister-in-law's husband's father and mother are from South Africa. And so that's obviously like a big rugby. Yeah. Oh, yeah, exactly. absolutely. Yeah. Rugby's huge. Yeah. So they were kind of telling me about how rugby fans like there's this anticipation of energy, right? Like much you're expected to be out of your seat. You're expected to be yelling and cheering and just like soccer fans. And mm -hmm. um, you're right. Like MLB has been discouraging that almost. So it's, I'd like to see him turn it around. I don't know. They didn't ask my opinion on it, but there yeah, it is. they should, <laughs> uh, you know, and, and, and if you go to watch baseball games in other countries, mm -hmm. it is unlike you, anything you've ever seen. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I took uh, I took my wife to a uh, uh, World Baseball Classic game down in Puerto Rico when we were visiting, and it was Puerto Rico and Spain, and it, it, it was music, uh, it was fun, it was a lot of you know screaming and singing, and it was like I don't think we sat down the whole game. Here, you start screaming and 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 rooting, and they tell you to sit down, mm -hmm. yeah. which is, you know, like look at the NFL. You pay way more money for an NFL game. And if you tell someone to sit down, you might get beat up, just so you know. <laughs> it's true. It's true. Uh, so are you part of the rabbit fans of the Jackals? Are you part of that no, group? I I have taken an interest. I'll say that. You know, I, I've had a lot of fun at the games. Um, it helps to have, like, my, my inside source there of my – he's not my father-in-law, but, like, I – rather than going through the convoluted, like, here's how I know him from South Africa to like, kind of explain things to me was super cool and interesting. And so, um, yeah, I definitely, I'm going to keep an eye on them and, and keep watching and Absolutely. keep going to more games. It, they play at the old ballpark. The, uh, I was just going to say they play at the Arlington. old Arlington, right? Yeah. Yeah. So it gives me an excuse to be back in there. Cause that ballpark is absolutely beautiful. And, 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 maybe when they come back, but the Roughnecks also play there in the AFL, XFL. I'm sorry. They yeah. also play there. Um, so I remember that, you know, I was watching those games and I'm like, you know, cause I like football. I'm not going to deny it, you know, and I was watching XFL games and they were playing. I was like, Hold on a second. This is where they used to, the, the Rangers used to play. Yeah. It's so, crazy looking, crazy looking. So they changed it all around and doesn't look like a baseball field anymore. Yeah, I mean, you can still see like some of the fence, the outfield fence is still there, but they've got these risers now out in where left field was to kind of bring the seats closer to mm -hmm. the the field. And then they blew out a part of the third base seating bowl. So like where the visitor okay. dugout used to be is no longer there. Hmm. Nice. Yeah, it's interesting. It's cool. I gotta take a look at it. I gotta take a look at new the new renderings for it because that's yeah. that's pretty cool. So only the Jackals right now are playing there, right? There is a USL soccer oh, team. That's that right. Plays, I think, that's right. FC, USL FC, FC Lone Star, Lone Star FC, something like that. I haven't made it out to one of their games, but you know, maybe maybe soon. Are they uh, USL one or two or championship? I don't even, I don't even know. <laughs> <laughs> we have so much soccer. I mean, you get. You have the sidekicks. If, if, if you want an indoor team, you've got FC Dallas, obviously. Like there's so much going on in the Metroplex right now. It's hard You're to keep right. up. You're right. There's a lot of, uh, a lot of teams in that Texas. You, yeah. What was it called again? Let's take a look. It's not USL one. I'm looking right now. It's not okay. USL one. So they're not there. Okay. I want to say it's Lone Star FC, or it could be like something related. That's what I want to say, but I could be wrong. Let's take a look at the championship because I think that's the highest level. Okay. Uh, you got switchbacks. Nope. That's Colorado, Detroit, El Paso, uh, Louisville. Nope. 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 Miami, Memphis, Monterey championship has a lot of teams. Yeah. Oh my God. Sacramento, Tampa, San Diego. Okay. I don't know where it is. So maybe it's USL too. Or maybe it's not even USL. Maybe I'm making that up. You know, what? I know there's a soccer team that plays there. I want to say it's USL, but I'm not. I'm not willing to stake my reputation <laughs> not, on that. Well, <laughs> let's see, because uh, there is a in the USL two, there is Houston, Corpus Christi, Round Rock, 
uh, Royals and another AC Houston. There's a lot of, you know, Texas teams yeah. there. Oh my yeah. God. You're right. Texas has a lot of teams. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. Okay. I'll take it. Uh, yeah. Not a lot of teams here. And actually, no, uh, Carolina has one uh, here in, in, uh, in rally. They actually have one. Uh, and Charlotte has the another Railhawks. one. The Railhawks, right? Uh, North a... Carolina FC. Okay. Yep. Yeah. So I'll back in it. the day, back in the day when I was playing like summer league, W league, it was, uh, I want to say it was the Railhawks, the Cary Railhawks or something like that, but. Nice. Like they, they do have a women's a one as ago. well. Yeah. They do have one yeah. in women's team. They play in the same area. Uh, let's talk about that. Cause you also played, right? I did play soccer. Yeah. My whole life I played soccer. Collegiate. And did you play any like, you know, semi-pro or pro or anything like that? No, I played through college. I played at a, a small school, not far from you. Mm -hmm. Um, Campbell University and Bowie's Creek, and they the camels. we were the camels, the fighting camels. That's, yeah, that's right. right. Yeah, yeah. So we were in the Atlantic Sun Conference at the time. After I left, they they reclassified into the Big South, um, but that's that's where I played four years um, and did W League. You know, all throughout the summer, which was you know semi pro is probably a good way to say that. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Yeah. I wish yeah. I would have played one year of, of something, you know, I wanted, I actually, not only people know, but I tried out for baseball, uh, back in when I was in, uh, in Cleveland, I didn't do good. I got cut right away. So that was not fun. <laughs> I couldn't play. Let's be, I'll be honest. I couldn't play. I sucked. Uh, but I tried out, I gave it a shot. That's all that nice. matters. So I did a lot of, uh, I did a lot of practicing soccer. That's what I like to say. People say, did you play <laughs> soccer in college? I said, well, I, I did some playing. I did a lot of practicing of soccer. <laughs> I was really good at practicing. I'm going to tell right. you that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, you know what? I'll take it. That's, that's, that's a good way of saying it. At least you were part of the team. That's all that matters. <laughs> yep, exactly. I played a maybe, I think like I played a year in high school and that was it, but I wasn't that good. Um, so all right, so here we go. Um, one, I got another question here on Twitter. You ready? Yep. Ethan Bryan, if you could play catch with any current baseball player, even though you've already answered this question uh, on Twitter, who would, would you play catch with? Yeah, I didn't realize when when I saw that tweet from Ethan, because I had just talked to him like maybe a couple of days before that, I thought that he was just asking me and I didn't understand that it was like this subset of questions <laughs> for the show. So I answered it yeah, and you're like, wait, wait, wait. So um, I got to say, like, I am a diehard Rays fan. We know this. So my favorite my favorite ball player right now is is Joey Wendell. And he played third base for the Rays. He got traded on my birthday. Oh, to, I know. Right. Insult to injury to Miami. So he'll be there now. But I would love to have a game of catch with Joey Wendell or a Brett Phillips or an Evan Longoria. Those, those would be my top three. Joey Wendell. He doesn't use any uh, batting gloves, does he? That's right. Yeah. He's old school. Oh, I love it. He just like he grabs it and he puts his hands up. And I remember. Yep. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's I respect I people who a, plays with yeah. no batting gloves. Love yeah. that. He's just a pure baseball player. Like that's what it's so fun to watch him play. Cause you just know none of it is for, for flash or show or anything like that. Like he's just trying his best. And he's doing a good job. I mean, cause he's still in the league, you know, cause it's not, it's not easy staying in the majors nowadays. Yeah, and He was an all-star last year. So love it. Absolutely yeah. love it. All right, let's see. Let me see if I have our other questions. I have one here from Paul, uh, but I'm not going to ask that one just yet. Okay. And then, uh, okay, so you already, Eric, already, you know, you answered this one. Uh, is this the first podcast that Anna has done as a guest and not just as the host? Uh, he said he's also really looking forward to listening to this one, but you've already said it. You've already been on another one. Yeah, once before. So this is the second time. Nice. That's pretty cool. Um, do you still listen to that podcast? Yeah, I do. I don't, I don't check in on it as much when we're in the off season, you know, mm -hmm. there's a lot of other things to kind of focus on. 
I like to say I get a lot better at my job when there's no baseball on. <laughs> so I, I'm trying to yeah, finish up some projects and stuff so that I can, you know, devote more hours to to baseball here in a couple of weeks. Oh, yeah, because it's coming and we're all going to be very busy uh, watching, playing, doing, you know, what we oh, do yeah. with the podcast and all that. So um, so um, what's ha- what's happening with uh, what's next with uh with uh with your with your podcast are you playing are you still you know going to do just the fans are you going to reach out to other people um what's the the next step for the podcast yeah i think it's 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 an interesting question it's one that i i spend a lot of time thinking about right because like i want to do right i want mm-hmm. to do things the right way i want to remind myself what the initial idea was yeah and so I, I think right now it's kind of in this, this good balance of talking to like the average fan, giving the average fan a platform to kind of share what's meaningful to them. You know, I think a lot of people have told me after it goes live that they're just thankful to have basically recorded oral history of their lives, you know, something that they can come back to for these memories and everything because everybody has an answer to the question, what's your favorite baseball memory or what's Mm -hmm. left on the baseball bucket list, but they don't necessarily know it until somebody asks them. So I think, you know, that's, that's goal. Number one, I want to keep doing that. I want to keep reminding people what baseball really is about. And I like having stories of of people who have you know quote unquote made it in baseball whether it's entrepreneurially Mm -hmm. or you know i'd love to have brett phillips if brett phillips hears this podcast and he wants to come talk about his baseball bucket list like i would i'd be over the moon for that so yeah i'd love to have a couple of high profile you know people to mix in there with with the average fan but i want to try to stay true to the initial thought behind it that's cool though because like you said everybody has that baseball memory everybody has a a bucket list even including yourself right that you know there's things that you want to do as a fan um that are still out there um and you know like you said like you also want to make sure that what you're doing is you know i'm sure you're thinking it's like you don't want to be able to do this full time i want this to be my job my career my you know, what I do as a living instead of working for someone else or anything like that, you know, so you're, you're on the right path. You're on the right path. (laughs) Well, I hope so. And then, uh, you know, with, with curved brim, I think, I think we're all, you know, the, the idea is just everybody pile in the car and let's all drive to the same place. So. Mm -hmm. And it's all positive. Right. I mean, and Mm -hmm. I think that's Mm -hmm. one of the things that we were talking about when we were talking to you is like, you know, whatever your, your projects are, that's all on you. That's what you do. That's your, that's your thing. But like, we want to make sure that we create a place where it is positive and we're all, you know, pushing each other up, you know, we're helping each other and promoting each other, which we're already do anyways, you know, without corporate media, uh, we're always retreating each other's stuff. It's like, you guys got to listen to this episode and all that, but now it's more of a, you know, central place. And Hey guys, make sure you guys go to corporatemedia.com. Okay. Just make sure you guys do that. (laughs) Um, but yeah, I love it. All right. So you ready for the, uh, Paul question? Yeah, let's do it. All right. So Anna, what's left on your bucket list? Cause you asked this question, but nobody has asked you. That's true. There's a lot left to do. And there's, you know, several things outside of my control. You know, I'd love to, I'd love to sit down and watch a no hitter or a perfect game or a four home run game or something like that. But you know, that's obviously not something I can dial up and just, you know, knock off. So, yeah, but my biggest thing, because I think it would signify success in so many other areas too, right? Like being, I think it would mean being a meaningful, positive voice for the baseball community and, you know, having a successful website and podcasts and everything like that. My biggest thing is I want to throw a first pitch for the Tampa Bay Rays. 
Wow, that'll be ridiculous. Yeah. So that's that's like that's my number one bucket list item right now. And you know, if it, if it was the Rangers, I'd be perfectly content with that. Any any major league team, like that's that's my I'll say number one, throw a first pitch for an MLB game, preferably the Tampa Bay Rays. Yeah. Uh, that would be that'd be so awesome, right? Like, you know, you was like you get a, a in front of thousands of fans and you get to throw out you know the first pitch it doesn't matter it could be in the middle of the week afternoon i don't care i will oh, be throwing it out yeah. because somebody's going to be recording this because believe you me right somebody is going to be recording you throwing a uh, first pitch that'll be oh i hope you get that that'll oh, yeah. be so cool give me that one o'clock wednesday game like i'm there oh, right. i was just like thinking the, the same thing right. <laughs> Kids get where all the all the students show up, you know, <laughs> for right. weather day. <laughs> right. That's the one. I love it. I love it. Uh, so let me ask you before we go into my famous, not so famous questions, because you got to do it. Do you think the Rays stay in Tampa? We, I don't know what's going to happen. You know, I think they're at the trap through 2027. I think they'll be there and unless something well, if that place is happens. Yeah, right. But, you know, I don't think they say in St. Pete. There have been so many unsuccessful campaigns to keep them in St. Petersburg. If the team is going to be successful in the Tampa Bay area, they've got to go across the bridge. They've got to go to Tampa proper where the Bucks and the Lightning play, where the, the, uh, the Tampa Bay Rowdies play, I believe, are even over there. And so, yep. um, yeah, that was, you know, I, I, I don't think, the area ever did right by them by putting them where they did. And Mm -hmm. that was just one of those multi-purpose stadiums that they, you know, WWE wrestling or something like that. And monster truck. Cavernous of a place. Yes. Yeah. So they've made it a lot better. I will say if you haven't been to the trap in the last three or four years, like give it another look. It's Mm -hmm. fun. It's a great place to see a game, but yeah, they've got to, they've got to go across the bridge they got to be in tampa if they're going to have a spot a shot at staying in the area is what i think so i don't know they could be north carolina's team they could be <laughs> vegas's team who knows you're right because vegas is vying for one nashville's is vying uh yep. portland wants a team as well um, yeah so i don't know yeah you know. i'd like to see him stay i'd like to see him stay that's you know that's where i i think they belong mm-hmm. i think um i I would like to be back in the the Tampa area sooner rather than later. And so I would prefer that there was a uh, baseball there. there right, for, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. Cause we'll I mean, you, 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 you get the state of Florida who has two teams, mm-hmm. you know, do you think that's viable for that state to have the Marlins and the Rays at the same time? Yeah, I think they're far enough apart, right? So they're yeah. four or five hours away from each other. I think, mm-hmm. you know, Miami, I, I think the problem is Ed, that they're not doing things the right way. Neither one of those teams is doing things the right way for the, the communities Guardians? that they're in. Well, but you know what? Like they're drawing fans, right? Like. Um, yes and no, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, but you're right. Like, t- I mean, you know, you watch the games for online or on TV for Tampa and like, you see that place is just empty, yeah. which is sad, really. You know what I mean? But here's the thing is a lot of people overlook the fact that, that the Rays have one of the highest rated, uh, one of the highest TV ratings. Oh, okay. So, so that is within TV. the MLB market yeah okay. right but i mean so like i live in dallas right now and we mm-hmm. are the the ballpark here has approximately like six different avenues to get to it right so like and i'll go to a game and i'll still sit there for 45 minutes trying to find my way back to an interstate to get home <laughs> after a game but where the rays are sitting right now there th- there's one way to get there it's this massive oh. bridge. The the traffic backs up. I mean, it's just it's it's not feasible for anybody to to make it there from Tampa down to St. Pete after work before a seven o'clock start time. It's just it's impossible. Choice so just location, they, location, location. That's really. right. Yeah. And yeah, and it's not even it's not like 
a lot of people say location and they think the issue is that the ballpark is, you know, horrendous or something like that, but it's, it's just where it sits. Like you could, you could pick that ballpark up and put it in Tampa a little closer to like Amley or Ray J. Mm -hmm. And it's a different story. I think you're right. We'll never never know. We'll see. Well, actually they might just go ahead and, you know, decide that they're going to go, you know, build a new ballpark across, you know, on the other side and, you know, and then they'll start getting more fans because I think the Marlins are Marlins are the Marlins. Um, Right. But like, you know, the, it, there's a lot of, and you got, you got winter ba- uh, baseball there right, as well. Right. So mm-hmm. you got uh, spring training there as well. So, I mean, it could do so much better if they yeah. just, yeah. Okay. So if you put, if you pick the ballpark, move it over, you think that they would thrive like no one's I, business over there. Yeah. I think you could literally pick up the drop and move it to a different location and nobody would have, you know, there would be your, your classic, just, negative nancy's who who want to talk trash about it but i think that the biggest issue is nobody can get there Mm -hmm. do you want them to bring the devil ray logo back you know what i like to i like the devil rays for sunday games you know Um, oh i love that i like i like the the throwback once a week maybe a couple times a month or something like that because they i like their baby blues i love when they wear their baby blues on sundays too so yeah i'm i mean i'm I'm all for it. You, you know, and me like, are on this quest of getting baby blue hats. Cause like I've, I've <laughs> seen them and I'm like, you know, cause if you see behind me right now, there's a lot of dark hats. I'm like, I got to keep uh-huh. putting, you know, different light ones in there. Cause man, I need, I need some different colors. That's yeah. Like right. everyone I buy is Navy. That's what it seems like. Right. Like <laughs> Right. <is> exactly. <laughs> and, and you can't help it sometimes because that's the only thing they have. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. So right. you got to go with what they have. That's why I bought the, uh, that um the uh wranglers hat the wichita wranglers because it was a baby blue hat thanks patrick making me spend my money like that (laughs) (laughs) all right so are you ready my friend i suppose we'll see (laughs) all right easy one you know you already know this one you're going to you're going to the drop right what's your what's your drink and food of choice so i i gotta go yingling you know, we just, we just got Yingling back to Texas, but nice. like for a long time, only available on the East coast. And so nothing said, welcome home, like a, like a cold Yingling. Mm, so yes, you're right. Yeah. Got to go with the Yingling. And then, you know, just I like, like classic ballpark nachos. Oh, okay. Are you jalapenos? Yes or no? Yeah. Okay. I don't go crazy, but I like them. Yeah. Oh, load me up with jalapenos. <laughs> oh yeah. my God. Are you kidding me? You and my wife would get along because she, oh. she likes anything well, spicy. You let her know. We'll talk because yeah. man, I love me some spicy food. My wife, on the other hand, not so not much. So much? Yeah. No, she's not a fan <laughs> of spicy food. Uh, I'm trying to get my daughter to uh, eat more spicy food. I think it's working. Uh, all right. Mountains or beach? Each easy. Come on. Good job. That's right. I had to give you an easy one. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, what does the perfect Sunday look like? Like ice cream Sunday? Nope. Or... <laughs> nope. The actual day Sunday. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I like, you know, we spend a lot of time with my in-laws on Sunday and I absolutely love that. I love playing catch in the yard with my nephew. Love that. I love a good Sunday ball game either either like take me to the park get me a beer let me sit there and just waste away you know the last few hours before work Mm -hmm. but also like i'm i'm a fan of the sunday ball game on tv as well like it's just so so the last last couple of sundays for me i've been watching some baseball rice and i sit there and all of a sudden i fall asleep (laughs) that is the perfect sunday for me right there yeah yeah watching the ball game just chill and if i fall asleep i fall asleep i'm still listen i'm still listening to because my wife tried to take the remote believe me i'll know so (laughs) nice (laughs) Nice. i love it uh hamburgers or hot dogs you know what i'm actually a vegetarian so um veggie dogs yeah no i i gotta say i'm i'm a fan of the impossible burger you had one yes surprisingly good right yeah they are yeah 
con- full confession. Okay. okay. Full confession here. Okay. My wife was actually the one who got me into like veggie burgers and, and all of that stuff. So it's, you got to thank her for that one because I'm, I'm, a, I was a typical Puerto Rican. It's like, nah, I need pork. Okay. I need <laughs> right. fried food. Okay. But no, you're right. I am a good black bean burger mm-hmm. with pico mm-hmm. de gallo on top. I will eat that all day. Yeah. You're right. Okay. I like it. I like it. Uh, comedy or drama? Ugh, make me laugh. All day long. Friends or Seinfeld? Friends. <laughs> Great answer. <laughs> Great answer. Have you ever sit there and like, even if it's like, you know, years later, right? Do you still watch some friends when, when it's on? Oh, all the time. That's like my <laughs> go-to feel good, like background noise, you know, whatever it is. And I can yeah. still quote like almost every line of that entire series. It's just my childhood like wrapped up. Yes. I love friends. It's great. Um, okay. Tacos or burritos? Burritos. You can walk with it, right? Like, I mean, exactly. with a taco, you can't really do that. And with a burrito, it's a great vessel to carry everything. And it's wrapped in a tortilla. So there it is. And less chance for uh, making a fool of myself. So that's always a plus. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. I still do. That's okay. <laughs> uh, deep dish or New York style? Uh, New York style. Uh, you know what? Yeah. I knew we were good friends. I knew this. Yeah. Um, okay. Star Trek or Star Wars? Ooh, see, I think I'm gonna I'm, I might make some people mad here because I'm actually gonna say neither. What? If yeah. you go deep space night, I swear to God, I will end this interview right now. <laughs> Cancel. <laughs> no, I uh, uh, I would say Star Wars over over Star Trek for sure. Like, okay. but I'm not. I'm not obsessed with it. Like it's not a, a cultural phenomenon to me, which I know is going to make uh, our, our good friend, Jim, probably a little upset, but. Right. I mean, yeah. Jim, don't listen to this episode. Cut it off now. <laughs> uh, okay. I Listen, my daughter after dinner now, she asks to watch Star Wars okay. after dinner. So we're, we started okay. on episode one. My wife hates me for this, but we started on episode one and we're doing the whole series. Uh, yeah nice you know what i will say is like if i had to pick like the saga that defines my my childhood or like my life it's got to be harry potter like that's that's my jam right there yeah so we watch you know we watched uh, the the whole series have you watched the new uh the new ones um uh fantastic fantastic beast Beast. Yeah. yeah yeah i have such a good i could never get into the books i'm not gonna lie i could never get into the books I tried. I just couldn't do it. <laughs> yeah. I liked them. I like reading a lot. So, uh, but yeah, that's you my, read them all. Love. Yeah. Yeah. When, when, when I say I read books, sometimes people think it's like, Oh, I got, it actually reads. No, no. I get audiobooks, guys. That I counts, get, man. That yeah. counts. I'm a huge on audiobooks because I like go running. So I pop on an audiobook and off I go. Yeah. So yep. I might, I might just put Harry Potter. And I'm going to try it out. See how that goes. I mean, that's going to take forever. That's going to be a very long run. Oh, yeah. So, <laughs> um, okay. What's the dumbest way that you've ever been injured? Uh, are you asking me this? Because you know the answer. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> All right. So quick story for you. It is 2019. It is the last year that the ballpark in Arlington is housing the Texas Rangers. Okay. And we have a good family friend who has passed away since sadly, but his name was Bobby Brown and Mm -hmm. he was a 1950s New York Yankee, actually Yogi Berra's roommate and also the president of the American league in the 1990s. And so suffice to say he had some excellent seats, right? Yeah. So every once in a while, when Bobby wasn't feeling up to go to the games, we would get his tickets and we were 12 rows behind home plate. And there's a pop-up and bucket list item. Like, here it is. I've been waiting my whole life to catch a foul ball. And there's, you know, like people all around me. And I'm like, this is my moment. And so I reach up barehanded and I catch the ball and I'm 
adrenaline is like pumping and I'm high-fiving everyone. And then I look at my hand and like, it just, something wasn't right. Right. So yeah. Yeah. Something wasn't right about it. They came, they got me. They're like, you got to go to first aid and, uh, went to the ER, ended up having surgery on that hand. So, um, that's the dumbest way I've ever been injured. The cool thing about it was I actually got to meet Chuck Morgan out of it. Who's the uh, PA announcer here in Texas. And he was going to help me get the ball signed by Astrubal Cabrera, who was the one who hit it, obviously. Yeah. But the day that all of this was arranged for me to go get the ball signed, they traded Cabrera to the oh, nationals. No. Yeah. So I got, I got, a hefty hospital bill and he got a world series championship, but I still have the ball. So I was just going to say, you still got the, the baseball, don't you? Yeah. And it, luckily it's, it's got the logo on there. It says, you know, like last season, 2019. So at least it's a little different than, you know, others. You should probably, I don't know if you, if, if you'll do it, but you should try to contact him through uh Twitter. I tried. He doesn't have a Twitter. So like, I don't know. I got a jerk. I gotta get a Twitter account, dude. <laughs> He was, he was a Ray for a while too. So he was um, a Cleveland Indian. Yeah. He's, he's one of those guys who's been everywhere. So. Everywhere. Arizona yeah. Diamondback. Everybody's a Diamondback at that point, at this point. Yeah. Yeah. My buddy, John says, I just have to like travel around with it and eventually I'll find him and, you know, he'll sign the ball and I'll be like, look, you broke my hand. And <laughs> like, dude, I broke my hand because of you. I got a big bill for this. Sign the ball. Yeah. Now give right. me your hat. <laughs> right. <laughs> Uh, do you think that cereal is a soup? No. Good answer. Cereal <laughs> is cereal. Uh, That's right. Okay. So if animals could talk, which animal do you think would be the rudest animal? Um, whew, that's a good one. I'm, I'm inclined to say cats. Yeah. I feel like, like cats do not care about anybody, right? So like I just they, the they just spit jerks truth. there are. <laughs> yeah. They are. Yeah. Yeah. Plus I'm allergic to them, so I can't do it. There you go. Sorry, Paul. <laughs> I know you got a cat, buddy. <laughs> um all right. Let's take a look here. A couple more, and then we uh we can end this uh this torture that it is of you being interviewed. Um okay, worst job you've ever had. Worst job I ever had. I've been really lucky with my jobs. I, I, you know, I've had very few of them, honestly. So I'd say probably like camp counselor at a summer soccer camp full of maybe some brats. Yeah. That's what I would say. Like, you know, not all the kids are nice. So no, not it. all the kids. Yeah. Uh, some kids deserve to get throat punched. Let's be honest about that. <laughs> I'll say it. <laughs> like, listen, kid, you're getting close. Yeah. Um, cake or pie? Pie. Yes, it is true. Yeah. Pie is delicious. Yeah. Um, let's see here. Pineapple on pizza. Yes, I or say no? I say no. I say no. I it's, it's it's not like a deal breaker for me, but like if we're ordering a pizza in this house, it's half and half. One half has pineapples, and that <laughs> is not my half. And then the other half does not. <laughs> so your wife is all about the uh, the pineapple, and you're like, "Do not touch my side of my side of the pizza with pineapple." That's exactly right. But you'll love this because her go-to order is pineapple with jalapenos. So, okay, sweet and spicy. Ah, yeah. Oh, okay. Yep. I have not tried that, so I have to try it first before. But I'm with you. I'm not a fan of pineapple on pizza. Pineapple is delicious. I love pineapple, just not on my pizza. Yeah, exactly. Wow, pineapple and jalapenos. Mm, that, that's an interesting one. I like it. Um, all right, let's see one more. Last TV show that or series that you binge watched? Uh, binge watched. So we watch a lot of reality TV in this house, mm -hmm. and. Um, I would have to say it's probably got to be some form of the Real Housewives of you know, whatever <laughs> it may be. So that's a if it's not Friends, it's Real Housewives of X, Y, and Z. You name oh, it, like some South, some city in the in the U.S. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, and I get so 
enraged by that show, right? Like my wife always says, you got to stop taking everything so seriously. And I'm like, no, but she's wrong. And this is why, like, here are the reasons (laughs) to support my argument. (laughs) I can't do it. I've tried to watch someone like these reality shows. My, my wife watches it just for like, you know, just to do watch something sometimes I can't, I cannot for the life of me, I can't do it. I can't. It makes my blood boil. Like to it be does. Totally <laughs> it makes me so angry. I was like, how? I was like, this is what what's wrong with society right here. <laughs> that you're that you're showcasing these turd nuggets right now. That's what I yeah. think. That's so. what I think too. And then I get a little too invested, and I'm like, wait, what? We're not going to watch Real Housewives of New York today? Um, <laughs> right, right. Hold on a second. <laughs> I need to know what happened. So did she get arrested? Did she get married right. with the guy? What happened? I don't know. Yeah catch me up <laughs> right <laughs> tell me what happened <laughs> oh man this was a lot of fun Anna. thank you so much for doing this um where can people find you on social media yeah so everywhere every which way um all the handles all the handles are a little different across all the platforms which is a great marketing tactic isn't it fun um, oh it's so good you just search for baseball bucket list on facebook instagram twitter we'll be there the biggest place to go check it out is baseballbucketlist.com. So we got this online community with a bunch of tools to help you plan trips. You can pin all the ballparks you've been to on a map and you can build your own baseball bucket list where you check off items as you, you cross them off your list. And then you come talk to me about it on the baseball bucket list podcast. That's right. And it's a great podcast guys. So you guys got to make sure you listen to it uh, because it's great. And then you can find that also at Curb Brain Media. Just saying, that's right. Guys. That's right. Um, thank you so much for doing this. Um, yeah, I, you know, obviously we're going to keep talking. So, that, you know, it's not like we're not going to say, okay, we'll see you later. We won't talk again. We'll probably talk <laughs> later on today. <laughs> yeah, Ed, this was a this was a blast. I really thank you for having me on. I, I had a great time. This was a blast. Thank you so much. All right, All right. bye. Bye. This podcast is part of the Curved Brim Media Network. Here are some of the other members of Curved Brim Media. Hi, this is Ed Rivera of the Data Chronicles. Join me as I interview people just like you and players, coaches, GMs on the path that led you to become a fan of the sport. I'm Paul Caputo, and on the Baseball by Design podcast, I talk to minor league baseball teams, designers, and other super interesting people about what these minor league baseball logos mean. And I talk a little bit about ice cream helmets. What's up, Bucketheads? I'm Anna Tomaso, and each week on the Baseball Bucket List podcast, I speak with a different fan about their favorite baseball memories, what the game means to them, and what's left to check off on their baseball bucket list. Hey guys, this is Patrick Larson from the Minor League Baseball Hat History Series. And in every episode, I go through the history of minor league teams through my personal collection of hats. You can find me on Twitter at at PatLarson1. I hope you guys enjoy. This is Patrick. And Corey. Of BaseballMapper.com. And we have made an interactive map to help highlight all baseball teams from the majors down to collegiate summer leagues. We want to bring you closer to baseball. So get on the site and find a team near you today. Learn more about Curve Brim Media at curvebrimmedia.com.